Hi everyone, uh, I'm Lan Tao and uh, this is Shu Yi. Uh, we are the TA for CS246 and uh, today we are going to have a review session for the linear algebra. And uh, uh, this board just lists all the topics we are going to go through today. So first we will go through the vectors and the vector operations. Next we will do the matrix operations. And uh, next we will do the types of matrix, uh, linear independence, eigenvalues, and the matrix eigenvalue decomposition. And by the way, the, all the slides are in the Piada, so you can also just, uh, uh, just uh, take the slides. So, so now let's uh, jump into the first part, the vector and uh, vector operations. Uh, I'll just uh, write here. Uh, so, so we start with some very basic uh, definitions. Uh, about the uh, column vector and the row vector. So, uh, so uh, if we talk about a column vector, then that means uh, we have a vector v, and uh, it has uh, uh, some elements inside. So, uh, and uh, those elements forms a column. So, in this case, uh, you can see the shape of this vector is n times one because it has n rows and uh, one column, and uh, each, uh, each row has one element. Uh, so for the row vector, uh, if we also represent as v, then uh, we can write in this way. So v1, v2, uh, dot dot to the vn, and uh, in this case, uh, the shape of v is one times n, because it has one row and uh, n columns. So that's uh, the basic definition. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, just uh, interrupt me if you have any question. Uh, next, we are going to talk about the dot product. So uh, the dot product, uh, if we have uh, two vectors, uh, let's say it's a u and a v. Then, uh, and uh, assume both of them are column vectors. So that means uh, I can represent u as u1 to the un, and v as v1 to the vn. And the dot product uh, just uh, give us a number. So uh, it can be represented as u dot v. It's equal to uh, each, each element, uh, each corresponding element multiplied together and then sum together. So that means it's equal to u1 times v1 plus u2 times v2 uh, until un times vn. So uh, to represent in, uh, to just uh, using a more like uh, either form to, to uh, write this, we can represent as a summation of i from one to n and uh, ui times yi. Basically just uh, if you expand this one, you will get the, the summation of every element. Uh, so that's for the dot product. Just remember, dot product uh, for two, uh, two vector will give you a number. It's not a vector in this case, if both u and v are column vectors. Uh, so next uh, is about the norm. So again, if we have a vector called u, Oh, let's say it's a uh, way just to be consistent with the, with the slides. So, oh, it can also be row vector in this case. Uh, but anyway, like the norm of V is equal to V1 square plus V2 square uh, on Q Vn square. Uh, so basically you just need to uh, sum every element, uh, square every element, and add every element together, and then take the square root. So that's called the L2 norm. Uh, so a more general form, uh, you can, if we're talking about uh, LP norm, like, uh, like P can be any integer, like L1, L2, L3, something. So the general formula is like summation of I from, goes from one to n, uh, vi to the power of p, and then you uh, take one over p outside. 
So let's say if it, uh, uh, because this is like L2 form, so uh, that means I just need to uh, set P as two. So in this case, uh, let's say like L2, it just equal to, I equal to, goes from uh, one to N, uh, VI to the power two and the one over two. So as you can see, if you expand this one, this is the same as the definition I wrote before. So you just sum, uh, square every element and uh, sum them together and uh, take, take a square root. So uh, this is a like, general form of uh, uh, P norm. Uh, is there any questions for this? Cool. Uh, so next is about the triangle inequality. So uh, basically uh, we know if we have a vector called u and another vector called v, then the summation of uh, u plus v is just uh, uh, just like this. So uh, u uh, vector u vector v and the vector u plus v form a uh, triangle. So you know like uh, some properties of triangle. So the norm, uh, let's say the the size the length of uh, uh, this, uh, the, the, the length of vector u is like norm u here, and uh, uh, similarly, so we have norm v here, and uh, we also have a norm u plus v. Then uh, by the triangular inequality, so we know if we add two sides of a triangle, so it's larger or equal uh, than the, uh, the other uh, length of, the, the, the length of the other side. So we have uh, u plus v is larger or equal to uh, the length of the other side. And uh, another property is uh, the subtraction of two sides of a triangle is uh, smaller or equal to the other side. So we have uh, u minus v is smaller or equal to uh, u minus v. So uh, just just to be to make it positive, so we take uh, absolute value, and uh, uh, yeah, so that's a triangle property. Uh, next, we're going to talk about the matrix operations. Uh, so start with some basic, some very basic operation is like addition. So if you want to add two matrix, you, you have to make sure those matrix has the same shape. Uh, so for example, in the slides, uh, we show a very easy example. If you have a matrix one, two, three, four, and if you want to add another matrix, that is like five, six, uh, seven, eight, then the result will be just uh, you add element by element. So one will add to five, and the two will add to six, and the three add seven, uh, four add eight. So that's the matrix you get after matrix uh, addition. Uh, next, matrix multiplication. Uh, so in this case, you also need to be very careful, uh, careful about the shape of the matrix. So if one matrix has shape like m times n, then the other matrix, if you want to multiply, it has to, uh, like, basically, the, the, those two n should match each other. Otherwise, you cannot do the matrix multiplication. So, and the result uh, shape will be m times p. So that's like, you kind of, like, uh, uh, just uh, uh, remove the n uh, in, in the middle, and then you just, uh, the final shape will be uh, just the m times p. Just be careful with this. So one example in the slides is like, if you have one, two, uh, three, four, and uh, you multiply it with uh, uh, five, six, seven, eight. And uh, let's say, so this matrix has shape two times two, and the second matrix also has shape two times two. So uh, then the final result uh, will have shape also two times two. And uh, uh, a very important formula uh, you need to know is like, if I want to multiply matrix A and B, and uh, I want to get the element uh, at a position I and J, 
then the, the way to get it is like, it's equal to a summation of k. So uh, a i k times b k j. So that means you just uh, need to expand the matrix. Uh, so the way to understand it is very, uh, is very similar to understand the shape. So you can say uh, a i k and the times b k j, that means k just uh, kind of like uh, cancel each other and you just need to end up like with i and j. And uh, so that means, uh, for example, uh, let's say do this example. So this means I'm like at index zero zero. So that means my i j, uh, my i is equal to zero and the j is equal to zero. Uh, so uh, this, using this formula, we just need to sum all the k. So in this case, that means uh, I'm looking at I'm looking at uh, this is uh, i equal to zero means the uh, first row. So I'm looking at the first row and the j equal to zero, that means uh, the first column. And uh, k means I go through every element in the first row and uh, uh, I go through every row in the uh, second, like basically I'm just uh, looking at those two numbers and uh, those two numbers and uh, multiply them together and uh, do the addition. So that means uh, this is equal to one times five plus two times seven. Uh, so does this make sense? Basically just uh, apply the formula. And uh, similarly, if you look at uh, this uh, position, so this position is at uh, uh, this i equal to zero and j equal to one. So that means you need to uh, look at the first row of the first matrix and the second column of the second matrix. Uh, so uh, this means you need to do the, uh, use the number one, two, and uh, uh, six, eight in this case. Uh, so this is equal to uh, one times six plus two times eight. Uh, so that's the idea of how to do the matrix multiplication. Uh, so is there any questions for this? Uh, Cool, so let's move forward. Uh, maybe it's, let's use this one. Uh, some properties of the matrix multiplication. So uh, if I have A, B times C, then uh, I can also do the a times B, C. So this is called uh, associative. Uh, basically, I, I can just uh, group any two matrix together uh, to compute it first. So in this way, I can compute A, B first and then times C. Uh, I can also do the, time, uh, do the B, C first and times A, so I will get the same result. Uh, Another property is A times B plus C is equal to AB plus AC. Uh, so this is called uh, distributive. Uh, so this means if I have uh, two matrix uh, added, added together and a time another matrix, that's equal to uh, uh, the matrix time together and do the summation. So that's also equivalent. Uh, so, but uh, just remember like A times B is not equal to B times A. Uh, that's, uh, for, uh, that's, uh, that's, e that's is equal for the integer, like a value time together, but it's not equal for the matrix. Uh, so uh, some counter example is like you can, you can like uh, just to make up some numbers and then you time it together, then uh, you will find this not equal. Just very, be very careful about this. Uh, yeah. So next part, we're going to talk about the uh, matrix transpose. So uh, the definition of transpose, uh, the so transpose can also be right like you just have a like a capital T uh, matrix. 
Uh, so uh, the definition is like a transpose. If I want to co compute the uh, i j, so i row and the j's column of a, a matrix uh, transpose of a, then it's equal to like a j i. Uh, using this definition, we can have like uh, just some examples. Let's say I want to compute the transpose of uh, one, two, uh, three, four, five, six. Uh, if I want to compute the transpose of this one, so you just need to uh, apply the definition. And uh, also, also you can get the shape directly because uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, the shape of that is three times two. And uh, if you uh, understand this uh, equation, then that means you kind of like do the sy symmetric along the like a diagonal here. So that means after you transpose, the shape will be two times three. Uh, you just reverse those two numbers. And uh, the number you will get is one, three, five, two, four, six. Uh, let's say like uh, this number four here at the original matrix, uh, oh, it's a bad example. Maybe let's look at, uh, let's look at number five. So at the original example, uh, it's at, uh, so this is i equal to uh, two and j equal to zero. So that means it's like in the third row and the first column. And uh, uh, if I transpose that, so uh, you say like uh, this is at uh, i equal to zero, j equal to two. Basically you just reverse i and j and put it in another index. Uh, so that's about transpose and some properties of transpose. Uh, the first one is like, if you do a transpose twice, then you just end up with the uh, original matrix. Uh, another property is like, if you do uh, two matrix multiplied together and you do the transpose, that's equal to uh, like B transpose times A transpose. Uh, so, like another property is like A plus B transpose is equal to A transpose plus B transpose. Uh, so those three properties are listed on the slides. Uh, like as a practice, we can just, uh, because the first and the last is pretty easy, we can try to just uh, using our knowledge, we can actually prove the second uh, property. So uh, also kind of like a review of previous uh, knowledge we have. Uh, so let's try to, let's try to prove A, B transpose is equal to B transpose times A transpose. So um, in this course, you won't be asked to prove, but this is just for, for a practice of the review session. So basically, you just need to uh, expand the matrix multiplication using our previous knowledge. So let's say uh, I want to uh, compute the I and the J, so I row and the J's column element of the uh, AB transpose matrix. And uh, uh, let's uh, just uh, set AB equal to another matrix C and uh, AB transpose is equal to another matrix D uh, just for the like simplicity. So uh, in that case, uh, AB transpose at uh, IJ element, so it's equal to just uh, the matrix D at IJ element because uh, AB transpose is just equal to D. And uh, by the definition of transpose, uh, let's say here, so uh, Dij is just equal to Cji because you just need to, uh, you just need to uh, reverse uh, because like this is a transpose of that is this one. So you just need to reverse the index. And uh, using the definition uh, I think I already erased that, but using the definition of matrix uh, multiplication, you can uh, do the summation uh, 
uh, like this. So, so uh, this is equal to a j k times b k i because uh, uh, this is a j and this is i and uh, uh, you kind of like uh, cancel the k so you end up with j and i just so you can write in this way and uh, in order to uh, like uh, to prove this one you can do some like uh, transpose inside because uh, uh, a j k you can write it as like a transpose uh, k j uh, so if I do the transpose, I can reverse the index of uh, i and k. And the same thing here, so I can write this as like a b transpose times i k. Uh, now if you look at this, j and i are not equal, so I cannot like cancel using the way I want. But, but, uh, but uh, you can say the k and the k are here. So the better way to write it, because those are all numbers, so like one times two is also equal to two times one. So I can easily uh, reverse the order of those two numbers. So that means this is also equal to B transpose uh, IK times A transpose uh, KJ. So now you can see the k and the k can cancel each other and uh, end up with i and the j here. So that means uh, it's a little bit small. Uh, so let, let, me, let me just uh, write one line here. So after you get that one, then uh, you can say that uh, the d is just equal to b transpose times a transpose because every element is equal to that. So if I put all the elements together, then the whole matrix is also equal. So then we prove the, this uh, property here. Uh, is there any questions for this? Cool, so uh, next we're going to talk about the identity matrix. So the identity matrix is represented as uh, I here. And uh, in order to represent the shape of that, it's always a square matrix. That means the number of rows is always equal to the number of columns. So if I do like uh, I times uh, I uh, subscript N, so that means it's a, like a N times N matrix and uh, all the diagonal is one, the rest are zero. And that's, like, like, like I mentioned, the shape is n times n. So that's uh, called identity matrix. Uh, so there are uh, some like very good properties of identity matrix. Uh, so if I have a matrix with shape uh, m times n, then uh, if, I, if I use uh, a times i identity n, and so that's equal to uh, another identity matrix with shape m times m, and it's just equal to A itself. Uh, so uh, you can actually using the knowledge of matrix multiplication to work on this, because uh, let's say like if A is a matrix of m times n, and uh, so this means this is a matrix with uh, n times n, and you cancel those two n, so you end up with uh, another matrix m times n. Because every diagonal is one, so uh, if you use uh, a times uh, some value times one, then it just itself. So it will also end up with A here. So that's the idea. So same thing here. Uh, if I have like a matrix M times M and uh, I time another matrix M times N. So uh, then those two M cancels and the final shape is still M times N. And because of the one, so it won't change the value. So it still has the value. Uh, uh, everything will be still equal to A. So that's some property of the uh, identity matrix. Uh, next, we're going to talk about the matrix inverse. Uh, so the definition of matrix inverse Oh, first uh, the symbol, if I have a matrix A, then the inverse of A is, uh, can be written 
like uh, as a just a negative one. So this is not like, uh, le let's say if I write a number like uh, three, like to the power of negative one is equal to one over three, but that's not true for the matrix. So, so it's like different, it's just a symbol. So just represent the inverse of matrix A. So the definition of matrix uh, inverse is like uh, A times A inverse is equal to A inverse times A and it's always equal to the identity matrix. So that's why, uh, that's also a usage of identity matrix here. It's, uh, you, can, you can just, uh, it's kind of comparable to the numbers uh, multiplication. Like if I have like three, I times three inverse, so that's equal to one. So basically you can think about like uh, one as kind of like identity matrix and uh, uh, three inverse kind of like the A inverse and the three is like A here. But those are numbers, but it's very, the idea is very comparable to the matrix, but that's different, just be careful about that. Uh, and uh, there are some like properties of uh, the inverse. Uh, the first one is like, similar to the transpose, if you do the inverse twice, you just end up with itself. And the second one is, uh, if I have two matrix A and B uh, multiplied together, I do the inverse, that's equal to B inverse times A inverse. And the uh, last property is like, if I do inverse and uh, do the transpose, then that's equal to uh, the matrix do the transpose and then the inverse. Uh, so we can also just as a, like a practice, we can uh, try to prove the last property. Uh, yeah, everything is on the slide, so you can also uh, refer to the proof on the slide. Uh, so in order to in order to prove this one, uh, we just need to so prove this one. So it is equivalent to if I just uh, times a transpose on the right hand side. Uh, uh, on the right hand side of each like uh, matrix. So that means it's equivalent to prove a transpose uh, times, so it's equivalent to that because I just uh, time the same thing on, on, on the right hand side for both sides. And uh, uh, now if you look at this one, uh, so if you treat A transpose as an identity, so just to treat it as the same, same thing, like let, let's say like it's a B, then that's equal to like B inverse times B. So the right hand side is just identity uh, by the definition of inverse. And uh, if you look at the left hand side, then uh, you can apply the transpose property. Uh, so this is like because a times B transpose is equal to B transpose times A transpose. This is like you use it in the reverse way. So this is equal to A times A inverse transpose. And uh, so A times A transpose uh, is just equal to I. So then this is equivalent to this and also equivalent to this. Uh, so that means they're equal. So that means those two are equal. Uh, that, 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 that's the way you think, but if you write the proof, you just write it in the inverse way, right? So uh, then basically that's the, the uh, scratch, like how to prove this property. So yeah, that's, uh, that's all the part I need to go through. And uh, next, uh, let's welcome Shu Yi. So in our third section of the review session, we are going to talk about some uh, four types of matrices that might be involved in the class. Um, the first matrix is, type of matrix is,
diagonal matrices where uh, we, ha uh, we only have non-zero values on the diagonal entries of the matrix? So except those, uh, those n entries of this n by n square matrix, we have zero in other spots. So an important property of diagonal matrix is multiplication of itself. So if we, uh, for a brief example, would be to the d to the power of two, um, it's basically so if we want to find the uh, one one entry of this new matrix we need to multiply each uh, entry of the, of the first row of the first matrix uh, element-wise with the first column of the second matrix. We will find, because all other places are zero, we will see that the one one entry of the new matrix is D1 to the power of two. So all the diagonal entries will be the the original um, values of the same place raised to the power of two, and all other spots still zero. So if we uh, continue this chain of multiplication, we will easily see that d raised to the power of k equals um, d1 raised to the power of k, d2 raised to the power of k, and then all the way to dn raised to the power of k, um, but the and then it's still a diagonal matrix, and the non-diagonal entries are still zero. Okay. Um, um, the second interesting matrix we want to um, introduce briefly here is the triangular matrix. Uh, triangular matrices are matrices that have half of the entries equal to zero. Uh, if we talk about lower triangular matrix, then all the entries above the diagonal line are zero, where we might have found uh, we might find uh, non-zero entries. A11, A22 on the diagonal, and all the entries below the diagonal. If we talk about upper triangular, then it means zero values to the lower left corner. And then starting from the diagonal line, we will have some non-zero entries. The third matrix, uh, third uh, group of matrices is symmetric matrix. Symmetric means, uh, firstly, a matrix needs to be of size n by n. It needs to be a square matrix to be symmetric. And in this course, we are always talking about real matrices. It means all the entries are real numbers. So it's denoted in this way. And then secondly, um, it's the transpose of matrix A equals itself. Then this is a symmetric matrix. Um, yes, and the third one is orthogonal matrix. Orthogonal matrices are matrices whose inverse are the transpose of themselves. So if we say uh, matrix U is an orthogonal matrix, then U transpose time, uh, multiplies U equals U multiplies U transpose equals I, means the inverse of U equals the transpose of U. If, um, if we write U as uh, in the column vector way, then we say u1 vector basically 
um, occupies the first column of the matrix. And then U2 is the second until the U ends. N by N, so each column vector is of size N by one. Then from the definition, we know U transpose time, uh, multiplies U equals U transpose equals identity, then we will know that for the column vectors we have, um, ui times uj, or u transpose uj equals uh, either 0 or 1. It's 0, 1 uh, when i equals j, and it's, uh, it's 1 when I equals J and it's zero when I does not equal to J. So for orthogonal matrices, we call their columns are uh, orthonormal. Um, the vectors are orthonormal if if they are orthogonal to each other. So when they are different, they are orthogonal to each other, and then they are of unit length. So if ui transpose times ui is equal to one, means basically the length of the vector is equal to one, so it's of unit length. So we call uh, this set of vectors are orthonormal. Okay, so yeah, sure. All the um, entries have to be non-zero in the triangle itself. Like, if you have a zero on the diagonal, does that make it not triangular? Or yeah, yeah. Basically, um, um, so for lower triangular, uh, you have the top right corner has to be zero. But the other half, you don't have to be zero. You can have non-zero values here. But if you have zero, that's totally OK. Yeah. So those are the four types of matrices we, might, we want to remind you of. And then next. We briefly introduce uh, concepts of linear independence and span. So, um, a linear com uh, first we have a set of vectors, vi. Let's say we have n of them, uh, linear combination of. Uh, vi of these vectors are any vector that takes the form, say, alpha i, um, alpha 1, v1, alpha 2, v2, alpha n, vn. So these alphas are just coefficients. So if we can write a vector in this form, alpha i times v i, and then sum up uh, from i, uh, i from 1 to n. Alpha i are real numbers, coefficients. Then we say this is a linear combination of the vectors in v i's. And from there, we can define linear independence. Uh, linear pen, we say a uh, set of vectors are linearly uh, VIs are linearly independent if and only if uh, we can, the, the answer to this equation um, alpha i times vi and sum up to zero if 
uh, we say the vectors are linearly independent if the answer to this equation is only alpha i's are zero. So basically, we cannot find any other answer to this equation. Uh, and the only answer to to this is this. And then, okay. Um, so from linear combination, we can define more things. Firstly, we can define the span of a set of vectors. The span means all the vectors that we can can be expressed in as a linear combination of the vectors in the x, as long as the coefficients are well defined. This is the all the vectors or or a set of vectors that can be um, expressed as the linear combinations of the vi's, and then so once we have the span, we can denote it as large big S and then we can have the basis basis of S basis of S is a set of linearly independent vectors vectors that span S um, so if we, we can just think about this in a 2D example. So in our 2D uh, plane, we have a basis 1, 0, 0, 1. So firstly, 1, 0, 0, 1, uh, 1, 0, you know, one, they are linearly independent because the equation, the answer to this equation involving these two vectors is only zero, zero in the coefficients. So firstly, we know it's, they are linearly independent. And then they spin S, means any vector in this 2D plane can be expressed by a linear combination of these two vectors. So if we write any vector in this 2D plane as SY, then we can write it out as a linear combination of the two vectors. So 1, 0, 0, 1, those two vectors are a basis of our 2D plane. So if we project it to higher space, higher dimensional spaces, we might have, uh, we have other, uh, like maybe for 3D, we have 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, they are a basis of our 2D space, uh, 3D space. So once we define the basis of, uh, of, uh, of a space, then we can further define the dimension of space S. The dimension of space S is the number of vectors in a basis of S. So in our, in our 2D example, we call it two-dimensional because there are only two linearly independent vectors that spin S uh, in this spaces. So it's just two vectors, so we call it 2D space. Um, uh, we might also uh, know that the Basis of a space in, is not necessarily unique. So for our 2D space, we might have 1, 0, and 0, 1. We might also have uh, maybe 1, 1, and 1 minus 1. They are also linearly independent, and they can also span the 2D plane. 
So they are all, they also form a basis of the 2D plane. But basically, the number of vectors is still two. So we still call it a 2D space. So uh, may I erase this? Okay, cool. So after talking about the uh, basic concepts, uh, we might enter the last two sections of this review session. They are um, related to the Akin pairs where Eigenvalue, eigenvector pairs of matrices. Um, those are very important uh, in this course. Um, so, eigenpairs. So we um, define an eigenpair. Uh, if we are talking about matrix A, then an, an eigenvalue lambda it's associated or corresponding eigenvector as vector x. Then we define the eigenpair or the lambda x eigenpair um, by this. They're defined by this equation. So um, also we want to notice that if we if we take the special case of x equal to uh, the zero vector, we will have um, zero, uh, zero vectors on both sides, no matter what value lambda takes. So we basically uh, exclude zero from any uh, eigenvector. So we don't say zero is an eigenvector because it's so trivial. Um, okay. So okay. So next, after we we have defined an eigenvector and eigenvalue, we say eigenvector x. Uh, x is the eigenvector corresponding to eigenvalue lambda, and lambda is the eigenvalue corresponding to x. Um, and then, so after we define this, we can solve. Given a matrix A, we solve for all possible eigenvalues and their corresponding eigenvectors. So starting from that equation, I'll copy that line here. Um, we notice that uh, vector x is just multiplication of identity matrix and itself. So, and by the associated, so associated row, we have, we can move the parentheses to the first two. So we have this new equation where we can move this uh, square matrix to the left so that we have A minus lambda multiplies I then times vector s equals to zero. So this is the equation we will look at or we use to find all the eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So um, the next step is to have the determinant of the matrix as zero to find all the eigenvalues. But before that, I'm may uh, prove for you why we look at the determinant and why do we set it to zero. Um, so before we can do that, we need to define a NOS space of uh, matrix A. The NOS space of matrix A is the set of vectors that um, after the whatever transformation projection defined by A, we reach uh, the zero vector. So 
NOS space of A is a set of those vectors. And then, so in this, um, in, so in this equation, our matrix is A minus lambda I. We want to find a non-trivial solution to the equation here. So that means, um, well, naturally we can see that x as zero vector is a solution, but we always want a non-trivial one. So um, that means we want the not space of A does not equal to a set which only contains the zero vector. We want this. And then um, in some other terms, um, A does not, or um, sorry, this should be A minus lambda i. So A minus lambda i does not have full rank. Um, this is equal to say, um, we may think of the Gaussian elimination. Um, so for a Gaussian elimination, when we are solving for a linear system, we always do the operations on the whatever A matrix here. Um, always after Gaussian elimination, we have the lower left corner to all the entries are zero here. So we basically have uh, a set of uh, equations, but we want to start from the last one and work backwards. So that's the Gaussian elimination. And then, so in the last equation here, we have a n n prime times x n to be zero. So if a matrix is full rank, then the a n n prime won't be zero. So that means the only answer it's it's full rank. That's equivalent to a n n is not zero. That means in this equation the only answer is xn to be zero. And then if we work backwards, uh, the last, but the second one here is a n minus one and minus one prime times nx um, plus a uh, uh, X N X N to be zero. Um, after this step, if if the matrix has full rank, then X N must be zero. Then A N minus one N minus my prime is not zero. Then X N minus one is zero. So it's like step by step, we work backwards, and all the elements of the x uh, vector is zero. So basically, if we have full rank of the matrix, then the solution to this a times x matrix, uh, a times x equals zero, has only answer to be the zero vector. But in this case, we want the other way around. So we does not want to have the only answer to be the trivial case. So that means we does not want the matrix to have full rank. That's basically what the equivalence says here. Okay. Uh -huh. So starting from, uh, from there, if it does not full rank, uh, you may check with your other linear algebra classes, then the determinant. Uh, of this matrix has to be zero. 
Um, okay. But uh, you are not required to prove that in that class, in this class. But uh, it's always good to know. And then, so from here, we have the determinant equals to zero. Then starting from here, we can solve for whatever lambdas we want, or uh, whatever lambdas associated with this matrix. Um, a good case or exercise for this is uh, square matrix uh, with entries two and one. So um, we want to solve for its eigenvalues. And following our steps there, we have the determinant equals to zero. So the A minus lambda I is only to let's copy A first. Then the lambdas are only subtracted on the diagonal entries. So they are only two minus lambda, two minus lambda. And the determinant of this matrix is two minus lambda uh, times two minus lambda minus one times one. And we want it to be zero. Okay. So that will give us the lambda or the eigenvalues of this matrix to be one or three. So following the, we have, now we have found the, all the possible values of eigenvalues of this matrix. And starting from there, we may find the uh, eigenvectors associated or corresponding to each um, eigenvalue. So we, plug the va whatever values we have here back to the, to the original system. And we have AX equals to, let's say we take lambda equals one, then is equal to X. And then we can stop for this, or um, let's put it another way. A minus lambda I equals X. Plug in lambda equals one, then the matrix is one, all ones in its entries and times x equals to zero. So if we write x as a column vector, x1, x2, then we know uh, one times x1 plus one times x2 must equal to zero and same equation on the second entry give us the same. So from here, basically we know any vector that satisfies this equation is an eigenvector associated with our lambda one. So we can be one minus one, two minus two, or even minus one, one. So um, the eigenvectors uh, can be linearly stretched by any coefficient you want. So it's always a, a practice for, for people to limit it to unit length to, so, that, um, it's, it's quite, so, so that it's clear for everybody. Um, any questions? Okay, yeah. Uh -huh. um, why do we want the null space of A to not equal just the zero vector? Okay. Um, so our equation is a minus lambda i, lambda i multiplies x equal to zero. We want this, uh, well, basically from eyeballing, we can just say x, a solution to x is the zero vector, right? But we always some, want something that is not trivial. So that means like our NOS space of this matrix is not limited. 
Yeah, yeah, it's not limited to that just one vector. Yeah. Okay. Um, after, of course, uh, I mean, this solving by hand procedure is always easy with matrices of small sizes or low dimensions. Uh, for uh, big matrices, um, we always use you know computers to solve, and sometimes with uh, more complex uh, linear algebra knowledge. Okay. Uh, so after we know what eigenvalues, eigenvectors are, and how to solve for them, we want to briefly remind you of some properties. Uh, there are five of them. So first one is because, oh, sorry, just, I just erased them. But as we can linearly stretch all the eigenvectors, uh, we usually um, write them, or let me say, limit all the lengths to be one, or limit them to be unit vectors. Um, that's just by, I guess, practice. Um, and second property is if A is a square matrix or real matrix and square, and then A is symmetric, then we always have um, the eigenvalues as real numbers. So all of them are just real numbers. Okay. Um, oh, by the way, uh, for the five properties, uh, I have proofs here. Uh, if we do have time after this, we can go briefly after. Uh, but I don't think we will have uh, enough time, but okay. So the third property is for triangular matrices. Um, their eigenvalues are the diagonal entries present in the whatever matrix you are given. Okay. Fourth property uh, is the trace of a matrix. That handwriting. Um, the trace of a matrix, uh, well, would define it to be the sum of the diagonal entries. This can be proved to equal to the sum of the eigenvalues of that, that uh, matrix. And the last property um, is the determinant of a matrix is the product of its eigenvalues. So we can see here eigenvalues are really important for a matrix. Uh, it, to some extent, summarizes information present in that matrix. Okay. So lastly, I want to introduce eigen decomposition. Decomposition. Um, as you can see, it's associated with eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So um, if a matrix A um, its eigenvectors are linearly independent, then we have, we are promised uh, to have a decomposition form of matrix A. Um, well, um, then if we write all the eigenvectors as um, v1, v2, to all the way to up to vn. 
if we can, uh, well, we can always put them in a matrix form, then this matrix is an element of the decomposition. The matrix A is promised to be decomposed as matrix P multiplies uh, matrix D, and then lastly by the inverse of matrix P. So the P matrix, as written here, is the uh, matrix of eigenvectors. And matrix D is the diagonal matrix uh, whose diagonal entries are the eigenvalues, corresponding eigenvalues. So basically we have, we can decompose any matrix that satisfies this uh, uh, requirement into a form of D multiplies, uh, P multiplies D multiplies the inverse of P. And, uh, you know, the elements of the D and P are always corresponding to each other. So we can, um, we can switch, we can switch the sequence we have, the eigenvalues here, but we always need to switch correspondingly how, uh, where the associated eigenvectors are. Okay. Um, this property is very important or very useful because when we calculate some self-multiplication of large matrices, maybe a to the power of n, then uh, it's always computationally heavy to just time n, time n, uh, to, the, to like, you know, time a, time a to whatever we have uh, to the product. Um, we can always have this very clear and concise form, just raise matrix D to the power of N and keeping P and the inverse of P the same. And as we can see, because uh, matrix D is a diagonal matrix, as we mentioned very early in section three, we're just raising all the elements to the power of N in this matrix. So we only need to decompose A once and then use whatever information we got from that decomposition. That is uh, quite useful in uh, large scale computations. Okay. Uh, and questions? That would be the, the end of the, this review session. Um, all the uh, points uh, mentioned in this review session should be enough for the course, and uh, I think you are good to go with, uh, with homework assignments and lectures. Uh, you might encounter some uh, knowledge later in the course, but Yuri is going to introduce them uh, in the lectures.